As artificial intelligence begins to impact the video games industry in new and exciting ways, it's important to remember where it all started. And for many players, AI really made its mark in two of the most celebrated games of all time. Benedicta, the floor is yours. When you look at artificial intelligence for video games and how it's evolved over the years, there are two first-person shooters you need to talk about. The first is Half-Life, and then there's Halo 2. Half-Life was released on PC by Valve back in 1998, and it was a real turning point for characters in action games. The characters had their own behaviors, they could react to the world around them, and it helped tell the story of what was happening in the game. There were other games that had done this around the same time, notably GoldenEye 007 on the Nintendo 64, but it set a standard for every game after. Half-Life uses a really simple approach to artificial intelligence called finite state machines. You design a character's behavior to be in a state, like patrolling a map or attacking the player, and then you create events that say why they would transition from one state to another. So, a soldier might wander around the map until they see the player. After that, they start shooting. Or they might retreat if the player gets too close. While it's fundamentally a rather simple approach, with a lot of clever design, it can be quite powerful. You can lump in a lot of different behaviors you want your characters to have, and then reasons for why this happens. Even though this is comparatively rather old, it's still used by some of the biggest games today. The Last of Us series and even the more recent Doom games use hierarchical finite state machines to this day. Because sometimes, if it ain't broken, we don't need to fix it, right? So, while Half-Life set one standard for developers to follow, Bungie released Halo 2 in 2004 and set another one that we now call Behavior Trees. In a Behavior Tree, or a directed acyclic graph, if you want to get nerdy. You put all the different behaviors into a large tree structure and create rules in this in tree to tell it which branches to go down based on what's happening in the world as you play. It can then do individual actions or string them together in sequences of intelligent behavior. This is so useful because in games like Halo, you can quickly discover different situations, like having a whole subtree just for what to do if the player is in a vehicle. Or if none of the enemies have seen the player yet, what should we do instead? Plus, you can reset the behavior tree very quickly if something changes. While it sounds really simple, in practice it can create large spanning trees designed to work in a variety of different situations. It might get a little hard to look at, but they're still really easy to follow with a bit of effort. Behavior trees are pretty much a standard for controlling non-player characters in games today. They're available to use as part of the Unreal Engine, and even then a lot of big AAA studios build their own implementations. A big reason for this is that behavior trees are really accessible for designers. And that's really important for any artificial intelligence tool for a game. We want designers to make the best game they can. By giving them useful and accessible tools, you're going to help them make that a reality. Building great tools for developers is what we're all about here at Model AI. Be sure to subscribe for future updates on the exciting work we're doing, and of course, for even more episodes in the history of AI for Games.